Have you ever wondered why some people succeed and other people just seem to struggle? Well, in this video, we're going to look at the seven keys to unlocking your potential and let's find out what's been holding you back. The first key to reaching your potential is your mindset. No big surprise here, but let's look at what does it take? How do you get a mindset that helps you learn and grow versus being stagnant and stale? Well, it all comes down to a set point. Because if you think of the word mindset, you got your mind and then the set. And set is like the set point. So in other videos, I've talked about a thermostat. What you set the thermostat at is what it's going to be. Well, here, it's what are you setting your mind at? Are you setting it? for possibilities and what you can do or are you setting it for limitations and lack and that sort of thing so your mindset really filters everything whatever you set that point at that becomes your normal that becomes your reality now another big part of mindset is is this internal control or is it external control and that's all with your belief here so if you think that circumstances and things outside your control influence if you're going to be successful or fulfilled or happy, any of those kinds of things, then what you're doing is you're giving your power away. You're saying it's beyond you. It's outside of you. But a mindset that says, no, I have internal control. I can decide how it's going to be and what it, I'm going to feel, those types of things, that totally changes it. So ask yourself this question. Am I having an internal mindset where I believe that I'm the biggest influence on my success, my happiness, how fulfilled I am? Or do I believe it's outside of me and those factors influence me more than anything else, like luck and circumstances and what's going on with the economy, that type of thing? The other thing to look at in your mindset is, do you have an abundance mindset or do you have a scarcity mindset? And where are you at on that continuum? The more you believe in abundance, the more it's possible. The more you, it kind of becomes that self-fulfilling prophecy. And also, do you see it as possible or not? Is this something that could actually happen for you? Or is your mindset like closed and locked and says, hey, this isn't going to happen? Those are really keys on your mindset because people that have a closed mindset and say, man, this is all there is. They're just kind of fixed this way versus an open mindset that looks at possibilities and what can happen, that is one of the seven keys to your success. The second key is, do you have a clear purpose? And a good question to ask yourself right here is, what do I want? Now, when I ask people, what do you want? A lot of times what they'll do is they'll tell me everything they don't want. And sometimes that help that is helpful because then you can flip it around and decide, oh, okay, I don't want this, but do I want the opposite of that? But you must get clear on what you want because when you have a clear purpose, what it does is it helps everything sort itself out. Like it lets you align your values, your talents, and your strengths with your purpose. And it's easier to make decisions because you know, hey, this is what I'm going towards and this is what I'm going away from. So it's just real simple. And you can say, is this getting me in the direction I want to go or is it taking me farther away? It also makes your life more meaningful. If you think about something that you did and you're like, what was the point of this? Then <laughs> you felt it was meaningless. If you just didn't even understand why, why you were doing that. I've done that where I've gone to a training or something and I'm like, what's the point of this? I don't understand how to apply it. I don't understand how I'm going to use it. This guy isn't making any sense. So it needs to be meaningful. And when you have something that is purposeful, the meaning automatically connects. When you don't have meaning, it doesn't connect. And I've seen people who have asked like, why am I alive? What's my point? What's the point of it all? And that is really, you don't have a clear purpose. When you do have a clear purpose, boom, automatically, it gives you that meaning and it makes your decisions easier on what fits into this and what doesn't fit into it. 
third, we have consistency. When you are consistent, what you're doing is you're building those small habits and they're compounding day after day after day. I know it was like Einstein that said one of the, I think it was the eighth wonder of the world is compound interest. So you can have compound interest in all the things you do, but you have to consistently do them. I know for myself, when I have been really good about what I'm eating, I feel good. And I see like on my calendar, I circle each day or exit off and I think of a chain and I'm like, don't break the chain. When I do break the chain, then I'm kind of like, ah, oh, man, I, I got to stay consistent. So it's that thing of looking at how can I stay consistent? Because when you are consistent, you create momentum and you get momentum working for you. And when that's happening, you're going to like yourself better. So it's kind of the self-fulfilling prophecy and a feeling good and everything because being consistent, you're getting better results and better results. You like yourself, you feel better, and then you're building strong habits that can last. Number four is ownership. And when you take ownership, you are not a victim. You're not helpless. And that's such an important thing because so much of us, we can get into this trap where we feel like we're a victim or we want to blame other people or these types of things. But when you own it and you own the situation, you don't make excuses. You learn from the lessons and things like that, but you take ownership. And think about things that you own versus things that maybe you've rented in the past. There's a different mindset. There's a different feeling that goes with it when you own it. Ownership is essential for growing. You cannot grow if you don't take responsibility and own what happened. I'm not saying like be a martyr and take responsibility for everything, but if you are not taking responsibility for you, who is? And the better you can like just grab a hold of that and say, yeah, I'm taking the reins here. I'm in control. I'm in charge. I'm owning what I do, what I say, what I produce or don't produce. Then you have the chance to grow and learn. It's also when you are taking this ownership thought is you're going to be more proactive rather than reactive. If you really own something, you're going to be preventative about it. You're going to paint the house, you're going to weed the lawn, those types of things. If you're renting, you're less inclined to do that. So think about your life and think about, okay, where is it that I kind of feel like I'm a renter in my own life? And where is it that I've really taken ownership? Because when you take that ownership, you're going to feel respect for yourself. You're going to feel pride in yourself. And the areas that you feel like you're more of a renter and you haven't really taken ownership, you're going to have less pride and less respect for yourself. And it's so easy to flip the switch here, but it needs to be a conscious choice where you're like, I'm going to own this situation, good, bad, ugly, whatever, but I am going to take responsibility. Number five, we've got the growth zone. And this is a really fun one. If you look at the chart here on the graph, you'll see in the middle is your comfort zone. And obviously you're comfortable there. You feel familiar. But if you look at the next one, it's the growth zone. And then the farthest one out is the pain zone. Now in your comfort zone, it's smaller. And have you ever wondered sometimes like how people that know so little, they have so little experience, but they feel like they know it all. Well, it's because they're in their comfort zone and your comfort zone is always smaller. And if you look at the points around the comfort zone, there's only so much there. But if you expand out into your growth zone, then you're going to figure out, wow, there's a lot more I don't know, a lot of things to learn and grow. And you're going to feel like, man, I don't know very much. But compared to your comfort zone, you know a lot more because you're expanding, you have a lot more touch points out there. So the comfort zone is where we all start. And the growth zone is where you're stretching, where you're expanding, you are figuring out who you are. If you go beyond that, it is in the pain zone. So that's when you take on more than you can, you make promises that are bigger than you can keep, you stretch way too fast, way too much, and that's when you get the feeling of overwhelm and anxiety, those types of things, when you're way out there and that's very painful. But back to the growth zone, that's kind of like Goldilocks. 
the, the sweet spot here is that's where you want to elevate and expand. You want to look at how can I elevate and get a, a bird's eye view and see what's going on and then how can I expand? So you're going up and then you're going out. How can I expand my possibilities? One of the things I've learned in the many things I've studied and applied and worked with others is that the opposite of elevating and expanding is going down and shrinking. And when you go down, you don't feel as good. When you shrink, you have fewer possibilities, fewer opportunities. So this right here, growing, growing gives you an elevated experience, an elevated state. You're, you're feeling more positive. You're feeling more like I can handle this, more capable. And you literally are expanding what's possible for you just by the simple fact that you're in this growth zone. Because what's going to happen when you start growing? You're going to develop new skills. You're going to increase your confidence. And like I mentioned, you're going to have a lot more opportunities. So that's really the place you want to be is in that growth zone. Six is relationships. This can be friends or mentors that you interact with. And what they're doing is they are supporting you, number one, but then number two, they are challenging you to be your best, to bring out your best. Because there's a lot of people in your life that will bring out distractions. They'll get you all over the place. But these are people who minimize distractions. They help you stay on track. They encourage you, they support you, they revitalize things. If you're down, they help you, that type of thing. And they really bring out your best. They inspire you to be your best. And with friends, it's so important because they make you happier. I know I've talked about this in other videos, but it's important to remember that Harvard did a study in the 1930s, continuing to this day, and they've looked at generations of people, and the number one factor was friendships and the people you hang around with. So that determines everything. So here, you're gonna feel a lot better. You're gonna learn new ways, because you can learn one thing, but if you have, let's say, 10 friends, and they're all learning one thing, well, you just learn 10 things, not one thing. The last one is number seven, and that is action, taking action. Often, the difference between succeeding or not is simply those who take action versus, versus those who don't. So, if you take consistent action, you've already just set yourself from the pack because so few people consistently take action. You'll see some people do it sporadically here and there, but the ones that consistently take action, they're the ones that really move the needle and really get things going. So if you are taking action, you're gonna learn a lot. You're gonna learn what works and what doesn't. You're gonna be able to adapt and change and get that momentum going in your favor. Also, action helps you overcome fear. If you have a fear of something or you're afraid of something, taking action actually helps you overcome that. If you don't take action, then the fear and doubt just build and build and build. Also, action uh, gets rid of those what if scenarios. So what if this would have happened? What if that would have happened? Well, if you're taking action, you don't have to worry about what ifs. You are playing the game, you're out on the court, you're doing it. You don't have to wonder what if, you know because you did it. This will also help you with doubts. Like I said a second ago, action kind of erases those doubts. Remember that imperfect action always beats perfect inaction. Let, re let me repeat that. Imperfect action always beats perfect inaction. So if you're trying to be perfect or I got to study a little bit more, I got to get this down. No, take action because you're going to get a lot of feedback on that action. Like for me, when I post a video, I get a lot of feedback. If, if it goes well and people are watching it and sharing it and talking about it, I know, okay, I hit a good one. If I get crickets, no one's watching it, I'm getting feedback on that too. 
but that is so much better than me compiling lists and theories on what video is going to work and what won't, which one will be uh, connecting with people and which one won't, which will help people and which ones won't. By actually taking action, posting those videos, I can see in real time what's happening, what's going on. So action also helps you because there is a saying I heard, and I don't remember who said it, but it was overcome, overcome, overcome to become. So if you take action, you are overcoming your fears. You're overcoming your obstacles and challenges. And then you keep overcoming those, and then you become the person that can handle that, that can do that. So you can never do that, though, if you sit back, don't get in the game, don't take action. You'll never become that person that you're capable of because you don't know what it could have been. And actually getting out there and doing it helps you so much. I created a quote for this, and here it is. Taking action always works. It might reshape who you are before it rewards you, but in the end, every step forward brings you closer to your dreams. So far, we've looked at seven of the keys to success, and I went over them briefly. Number one was mindset. Number two was a clear purpose. Three was being consistent. Four was ownership. Five was in your growth zone. Six was relationships. Seven was taking action. Now, if you look below the surface of that, like what is the foundation of all that? What would make all those work? Do you have an answer to that? What would, if I had this one thing, it would make all those other things happen. It would be the one domino that would knock over the others. Can you think about what that might be? The answer is self-belief. When you believe in yourself, you make all these possible. When you don't believe in yourself, you substantially limit these happening. And if these are not happening, you're not going to have the success and the life that you are aspiring to. So it's important that you be able to believe in yourself. And let's look at the ways that self-belief impacts each of these seven areas. Self-belief impacts your mindset because the more likely you believe something, the more likely you're going to do it. If you thought there was no chance at all of something working out, how motivated and how much action would you take? Not very much. But if you believe and you think, okay, I can really do this, then that's going to get your feet moving. You're going to take action and you're going to persist when there's challenges or obstacles to overcome. Now, the opposite of self-belief is self-doubt. So the more doubt you have about yourself, the less likely you're going to be successful. So you're either feeding your doubts or you're feeding your beliefs. And those beliefs are going to impact your mindset. And if your mindset is bad right off the bat, then you're not even going to move any forward than that. When we look at a clear purpose, the clearer your purpose is and the more you believe in that purpose and you believe in your mission and what you're doing, what it does is it builds your confidence. It just gives you a boost of confidence and instead of doubting yourself and wondering, will this work or am I on the right track? You know, hey, this can happen. This is possible. I can achieve this. And that feeling is so powerful that when you believe that I am on the right track, I have a purpose, this is what I'm supposed to do. It just emboldens you. It gives you energy. It gives you all this type of excitement to wake up and get going. But when you don't believe in your purpose and you don't believe in your mission and you don't believe in what you're doing, that is really draining and you're not going to be very motivated. So the belief is so crucial to the second part. Third is consistency. When you believe and you're consistent in that belief, what it does is it locks in your commitment and your commitment just skyrockets. Why is commitment so important? Because the more committed you are to something, the more you believe something, you're going to take more action. And then you're going to trust that it will work out. You're not going to have trust and hope. You're going to just have trust. Because you can hope something might work, 
but then you're going to be kind of wishy-washy, oh, I hope this works, I hope I buy this lottery ticket and I win, or you can trust that, okay, I'm going to do this, and eventually this outcome or something better is going to happen. But if you are not consistent with it, it's not going to happen. And the more consistent you are in your belief, it just it starts this whole ripple effect in a positive way, and it helps you. Number four is ownership. I met some people that think, I will never own a house. I'm going to have to just rent my whole life. And if you have that belief that you can only be a renter, that's a different mentality than if you think, no, I'm going to be an owner. I know people that look at things like Apple and they think, okay, I can buy a phone, but I would never buy stock in Apple. And they have this belief, I can never be a part owner of Apple or any company. And so the more you can take ownership, then you can take responsibility and not blame others. But when you are not taking ownership, it's easy to blame, it's easy to make excuses, it's easy to say it's someone else's fault or some other situation. But when you're an owner and you believe in yourself and you believe I can own, I own something now or I will own, then it's empowering to you because it gives you a sense of control. And when we don't feel like we have control, then we feel powerless. And that is not a good state to be in. So you don't want to be a passive viewer. You don't want to be someone in the stands watching the game. You want to be an active creator, an active participant. And the only way you're going to do that is if you believe you're capable of doing that. And you believe you're capable of owning, owning your life, owning your destiny. Six is your self-belief definitely impacts if you're going to step out of your comfort zone and go into the growth zone. Because if you don't believe in yourself, you are not taking that step out of your comfort zone. You are going to stay in there. But if you do believe in yourself, then you're going to have the confidence to step out into the growth area. Even though it might not be perfect, even though you might make mistakes, you're going to believe enough in yourself to figure it out and grow and expand. Because you can handle it. Think of a bird, if it stayed in its comfort zone, it would never crack that egg and it never get out. And it would never also learn how to expand its wings and fly and have freedom and soar all around. So for you, it's the same thing. You need to be able to break out of your comfort zone, expand your wings, and learn how to fly. Well, number six, and that is relationships. When you believe in yourself, you're going to be drawn to people who have that same belief in you, that empowering belief, that supportive belief in you. And when you don't have that belief in yourself, you're going to be drawn to people who also kind of don't believe in themselves. They don't believe in you. And so you have a choice here to be in relationships with mentors, with friends, with other people who believe in themselves, believe in you, and that's a virtuous circle that's really helping you to expand and increase your possibilities. Or you can be in situations where people don't believe in you, they doubt you, and then your doubt in yourself is going to grow. So self-belief here is crucial to your relationships. A lot of people don't even try to get into a relationship because they don't believe they're good enough. Oh, I couldn't be with that person. Or why would this person want to be friends with me? Or this person's too famous. They wouldn't want to be my mentor. You never know until you try. And if you don't believe in yourself, you're going to stop yourself before you even try. So people here that are helpful to you, they believe in you. And they're not comfortable with the status quo. They're not comfortable with staying in their comfort zone. They want to do things that are rewarding and fulfilling. And they want to help bring out the best in you. And that only happens when you start believing in yourself and the people around you believe in you too. Number seven on self-belief is action. What actions are you taking or not taking? Again, it's not what you say, it's what you do. Because if you really want to see what someone believes, 
look at where do they spend their time, where do they spend their money, what do they spend their money on. That's going to show you what they really believe. And if they're doing things that are contradictory to what they say they're believing, their actions are going to show you what they really believe. If they say, hey, I really want this, but they're not doing anything towards that, they really don't believe that that is possible or they don't want it. So taking action all comes down to belief. The more you believe in yourself, the more action you take. The stronger your belief in yourself, the stronger, bolder action you're going to take. A great question to ask yourself is, do my actions show that I truly believe in myself? Do my actions show that I truly believe in myself, my full potential? Because you're either going to be acting into your full potential or you're going to be in acting into a limited version of yourself. I love quotes and so I made one here on this one. Self-belief is the foundation of all success, either lifting you up or holding you back. Recognize this truth, harness its power, and experience your life transforming before your eyes. Remember that self-belief is the cornerstone of success. With it, everything is possible. You can become more, you can do more, you can be more. But without it, the best strategies, the best intentions can falter. As you reflect on your self-belief, consider this. What would be possible for you if you increased your self-belief by just 5%? How might this small shift open up new opportunities and possibilities for you? Even the smallest shift in self-belief can open the door to a world of new possibilities. It's not about making a giant leap, but about taking the first step in a new direction. What are you waiting for? I encourage you to take action, look at ways to increase your belief, go through those seven ways that I showed you about what you can do to improve your life. And remember, unstoppable people have one thing in common. They don't stop themselves. So don't let the things in here stop you because you are stopping you. Go for it. See what happens. I'd love your feedback. You can send me an email or you can write comments in here. I'd love to hear how you're making progress and growing. If you like this video and got some value and want to continue on, check out the video, This Changed Everything. It's a story about a woman who made some massive changes and the positive outlook that she had on that. All the best to you.